Hey guys, uh, this will be short. Uh, I'll do some more tomorrow, but I was really, what? it's my boy, James. <laughs> um, I wanted to do something on Jude today regarding the grace of God being turned into lasciviousness. I have done this before, and when I was in church today, uh, I just had a compelling like urge to read Job. I and see so I a resolution would, camera. Yes, me too. Your camera. Um, and so, I'm sorry, it's really hot here. So, yeah, you can see my beautiful scar where they cut part of my arm out. Um, so, I wanted to go over this because it's not what you think, okay? When, you know, if, if the world translates a very vague uh, verse into what seems right to man, you need to look at it. Because... God is hiding things in there. And His Holy Spirit reveals to us in context what these things mean. Now, these same people, like the Lordship Salvationists, so you got to turn from sins or keep the law to be saved because they rely on their own righteousness. They uh, will give you what they think, in man's mind, these things mean. But I'm going to, I, I, you know, I don't even have to go to the Greek. I did go to the Greek to confirm it. But the King James gives us everything we need, all right? And it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, most people use this verse wrong. They make it seem like, uh, God's grace is being abused and therefore men are living lasciviousness lives and saying, well, I'm saved by grace so I can just do whatever I want. And that's not what this means. Okay, they have changed God's grace into a message of lasciviousness. So they have turned God's grace, which says that we rest in him, his finished work, and again, the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. Stop being silly. And that's what saves us. And we rest in that. We cease from all our works trying to please God. Because without love, we can't please God. We can't, without faith, no one can please God. And if anything is done without love, it's a bunch of self-righteous garbage that does nothing. This verse is actually talking about men that say God's grace can't be it because it gives you a license to sin. That the gospel can't be simply rest in Christ because that means you can do whatever you want. But you know what? I've never seen one person trust in Christ that heard the real gospel and there's so few that hear it. I'll talk to people, do you know why you're going to heaven? Why are you going to heaven? Well, I try. I do the best I can. I try to live according to the Bible. Well, that doesn't save you. What saves you is resting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's it. And that doesn't stir up, you know, the desire to kill people. Because I get people all the time going, oh, so I can just kill a bunch of people. Really? That's what God's grace, you know, like, urges you to do, kill people. It urges you to abuse people and hurt people. It's just a stupid straw man of self-righteous idiots. Yeah. Sorry, it is. So, Actually, when Jude say. talks about turning the grace of God to lasciviousness, to okay, hold on. It means that they're saying, nope, God's grace can't be it, because that gives you a license to sin, and that means you'll just abuse it. They turn that into lasciviousness. All right, what do you need to say, babe? Uh, it's just like a lot of the internet, because they that think, that over exaggerate and say, like, I know a YouTuber named I Hate Everything, and he basically, and then some people will comment, and people say, if you hate everything, does that mean you hate yourself? Yeah, yes. people really go into man's wisdom, is what my son's trying to say. They go into man's wisdom, okay? But Jude is saying, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
okay? But these men who came in, the were ungodly men, they were bringing the law, okay? It wasn't that they were saying, uh, you know, they thought that telling you that you better keep the law, you better turn from your sins, you better repent of your sins and keep the law, they were relying on self-righteousness and denying the gospel that was delivered to the saints because grace doesn't give you a desire to hurt people and sin against God. It just doesn't. But what I have seen is people that are saved thinking, wow, these, these people are saying I got to do this and do that to be saved. Am I really saved? Because they put these like conditions on salvation that makes you look at yourself. But we don't look at ourselves. We look to Christ on the cross and what it was already finished. We trust in him. That's it. That's all it is. And I'm going to do something on Job, but I'm just going to tell you, that book used to bother me a lot until I understood it. All of Job's friends were telling him he was being punished because he wasn't right in his flesh. He was doing something wrong in his flesh. But Job was saying, I will see my Redeemer. And he trusted in God. He trusted in his goodness and his judgment and not on what man thinks is righteous and just. And I'll do something on that. But we're, we're constantly warned. I, I, you know, it's like in Galatians when Paul says, I, you know, oh, foolish Galatians, are you so soon removed? I marvel at it that you're so soon removed from the simplicity that's in Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. Okay, anybody adding your works to his finished work is lost. They don't get it. You know, I believe there are some people that are saved that are just confused. But the, the, the clear gospel is so rare. I had a talk with my pastor today about it. Because I've been avoiding my church. I heard somebody say, you can lose salvation. Well, that means you can earn it. And I wouldn't go. I didn't go for a few weeks. And the pastor's wife called me. And then the pastor. And we talked about it. Okay. It's like I, I just. I couldn't go there. But I mean, I'm feeling better now. Because he's clear. And I'm clear. And you know, I, I just. I don't understand it. Because nobody that is seeking eternal life. That's seeking resting in Christ. Because nobody's looking for a way to justify sin and we're accused oh you just love your sin we don't love it okay we just know that the standards these self-righteous people put up are impossible and they're lying to themselves if a man says he has no sin there's no truth in him and you know anything we do without love is worthless i don't care what good works you're doing if it's not motivated by love for what christ did for you I'm saved forever. He loves me. Hallelujah. I'm going to live for him because I love him. Will I fail? Yes, I will. But he lives to make intercession for me. And I'm just going to stand on what he did alone. And his righteousness will be put on my account. Okay, I just wanted to explain that in Jude 1.4, it's not saying that people abuse God's grace and turning into a license to sin. It's men saying that it can't be God's grace. Because that means you can do whatever you want. And that, you know, you got to put some laws on people. You know, it's they're turning God's grace, changing that into lasciviousness. They're saying, no, it can't be that. Because that means you can just do whatever you want. And they don't rest in what Christ did. All right, God bless.